you have maintained awareness that you have a connection to a divine source beyond any worldly power. You value your conscience still. Knowledge has been kept alive in the world for your benefit. Now you need it as never before. Knowledge has told us to prepare these briefings for the benefit of humanity. Knowledge has guided us to take great risks to ourselves to come into the proximity of your world. To closely observe the intervention that is occurring here. Now that the briefings have become public, the intervention is aware of our presence and has tried to find us. To avoid capture, we have left your region and are in a secure position far outside your solar system. Our thoughts are private. Knowledge has taught us how to keep our thoughts private. And the great presence whom we call the teachers whom you might think of as an angelic presence has enabled these communications to earth to take place. Free of any technological interference or interception. We have great assistance in this matter. And humanity has great assistance as well. But even the greatest assistance cannot be effective if humanity will not claim its own strength and exercise its own duties and responsibilities as the native peoples of this world. Great assistance cannot overcome ambivalence. It cannot overcome all the compromises you have made in your engagement with one another and in your use of your world. We know what it is like to be discovered and we are well suited to provide this wisdom to you. For we have undergone intervention each of us in our own worlds. In several of our worlds the intervention took control and had to be overthrown violently at great cost. Others amongst us were able to prevent the seizure of our nations and our assets. We have learned through error and through trial, the wisdom that we are presenting to you now. We do believe that we were the center of life in the universe and that any who would come to visit us would take great interest in us. Since we were self-centered, we believed and expected that the visitation would be centered upon us. But, alas, their presence was to gain access to resources, to gain allegiance, to establish our dependence on their technology and to intertwine us in their networks of trade and commerce, luring us with promises of wealth and power. Each of our nations succumbed to certain degrees to this persuasion, for we were facing our own challenge of resource depletion in various stages of our seven nations. Four were overtaken. The other three resisted this sufficiently to build the strength to resist intervention. We do not want to see humanity fall under the persuasion of foreign powers. For most races the do will never regain their freedom or sovereignty. It is a critical time of decision in how you will live, how you will use and preserve your world and how you will engage and discern the greater community. The wisdom that we provide here can be very helpful to you in understanding what you are facing beyond the borders of your world. But we must call upon your strength. We must encourage you to mount this effort for yourselves. To educate your peoples and to undertake a greater community education. Your peoples are facing persuasion, inducement and pacification from their contact with those who are in your world today. The intervention cares nothing for your cultures, and freedom is unknown to them. They only see it as the weakness of humanity. Believing in the strength of the united effort, you will not meet their leaders, for they are hidden. You will only encounter their servants and their human representatives. Already they have created crossbred individuals who are advisors in the corridors of power particularly in the arena of commerce. They are planting seeds for a long-term effort. And humanity is aiding them in more ways than it knows by engaging in conflict between your nations and tribes. 
in competition and contention between your religious institutions and by over-exploiting and over-using the resources of your world and not distributing them equitably. As any advanced nation must do you are aiding the intervention in countless ways. They have but to plant their seeds, carry forth their agenda and allow time to bring humanity into their grasp. It is a plan well conceived. But it could not be achieved if humanity were well versed in the affairs of the greater community. Recognize the danger in its midst and were determined to correct its activities and behaviors in the world. This is why briefings from your allies have been sent and have been sent again. We must repeat a message continuously for it to be clearly understood. For we are competing with other messages that are being sent to the world. Messages from the intervention and messages from those nations that support the intervention. We are communicating very different messages from one another, from very different sources, with a very different message, leading to a very different outcome. If you believe or pray that another nation will come to save you, you will be saved by another nation that has helped lead you into your current and future state of decline. You will be playing into the plans that have been sown and laid for you. What nation would come to defend your world and guide your leaders if they did not have the intention of establishing themselves there? No nation, no free nation would risk its anonymity to do this or to put itself in direct opposition to nations that are not free. To risk war and the destruction of all that they have established to build their immunity, their discretion and their freedom from the greater community at large. It is a fool's trap. You do not yet see that those who would come to save you are but the competitors of those who seem to threaten you, or even in some cases are working in concert with them. One will weaken you, the other will seem to rescue you. And all of this behavior will be done in compliance with what is allowed as long as humanity does not show significant resistance to the presence of foreign races. Like many general rules, there are many ways to get around it. Many ways to use it and many ways to exploit it. The regional powers that hold such sway in this region of space simply do not want war or outright conflict. They do not want their networks of trade to be disturbed. A few will take interest in the possibilities for your world. But most simply want to maintain the great networks that they have established and on which they are now dependent. Your true friends in the greater community will not try to take over your world. Anyone who comes into your world and interferes with human affairs must attempt to control human awareness, perception and behavior to their own ends. Even if they believe they are doing this for your benefit, they must still seize control and exert their influence in ways that will undermine your future and your freedom. The wise in the universe know these things. The unwise either do not know or choose not to listen. The fate of humanity will be determined in the next several decades by how humanity faces its own environmental crisis and how humanity chooses to deal with and to respond to the intervention that is in the world today. It is a time of great choosing, a time of great risk. We know this. We had chosen incorrectly and then correctly regarding our encounters with life and the universe. But we had others like us to advise us, for not only did we have allies in the universe, we had great friends beyond the visual range. Groups such as ours were sent to each of our worlds to advise us and to help us to prepare through knowledge and wisdom. They did not take an active part in our liberation. They were only mentoring us towards the freedom and educating us as to what freedom would require and how it could be achieved. Every individual in the universe who is intelligent has knowledge within them. 
but in a highly controlled environment the possibility of this knowledge to be stimulated and to emerge becomes very, very small. We would consider life in these nations intolerable and extremely cruel. That you are just simply used as a resource to serve the existence and the survival of your group and the powers that lead you. There are even nations in your world today who are leaning in this direction. We have seen this and learned this through your communications, through your foolish broadcasting. If you lose your resources, you will lose your freedom. Even without the intervention, this would be the case. To keep civilization from collapsing, strict order would be imposed with no allowance for dissent or disagreement. This is why the destruction of your self-sufficiency has called both your allies and your competitors to your world. Your competitors see a great advantage. Your allies see a great need. We do not need what your world has, but we do have a need to have another free nation in our midst, a nation that is not governed from afar, a nation that has established stability and security for its people. A nation that has grown in maturity and scope and that has become trustworthy and united. We support this throughout the universe. And we greatly support it within our own region. That is why knowledge has brought us in service to humanity. In the great tradition of life and the universe. Those races that have achieved freedom and the collective awareness of knowledge of a responsibility to provide knowledge and wisdom to weaker races and to emerging races such as your own. Yet this provision must be undertaken without interference. That is one of the stipulations that is required. We can advise, but we cannot interfere if we are to pass this wisdom on to the peoples of the earth. And if we are to empower the peoples of the earth to become a strong and united race, this great heritage and the transmission of wisdom has been underway since before anyone's memory or awareness. It is part of the plan of the Creator to share the achievements of one race with others. We assume this is happening everywhere in the universe, though we cannot tell for sure. We were supported in re-establishing our freedom and independence. And now we are here to advise the human family as to what it must see, know and do to assure its freedom and independence. Thus, the tradition is maintained. And it continues onward.